Hey everyone, the name's Eric Dorn. In today's video, let's discuss ENFJ bonding and communication and pe how ENFJs deal with people. And let me ask you, just to, int uh, to introduce this video, how do you perceive ENFJs dealing with people? Or if you are an ENFJ, how do you see people? And how do you communicate with people? And how do you feel people's emotions? Because I think that there are lots of negative stereotypes about extroverted feeling, FB, uh, feeling judging as it is, being about manipulation and control of people, and very little addressing how ENFJs feel about people. Do ENFJs feel anything about people or they, do they just use people for various means? Do they just think what everyone else thinks or do they have opinions of their own? That's often the questions that I think are created by the MBTI stereotypes. I believe that ENFJs have two core ways of interacting with the world as it is. First and foremost, they are interested in grabbing onto what's in the world, what is available, visible, clear, what you can take and use. And secondly, they are interested in using this to help people, to move people, to improve and change how groups operate, to change how the world operates, to move the world, to have an impact on the world. Those are the two executive uh, uh, priorities. That's what me being an extroverted judging type means. Now, as being an EN type, it's all about grabbing on to different trends and patterns. So, the ENFJs are really, really perceptive to patterns around them. They notice what people are doing around them. They notice how people are in, uh, impacting them. They notice what other people are doing. They are extremely perceptive to other people and to how other people are feeling and what's happening in the group and they are always up to date with the group and its status. If somebody is starting to struggle, ENFJs are usually the first to be hit by this. To notice it and bring it up and to want to do something about it. And that decide to do something about it. That's feeling judging in so many ways. Feeling and judging intimately ties into wanting to move and to have an impact on other people's lives. To want to do something positive for someone else. To want to help someone else if they are struggling. To want to, if somebody is uh, starting to lose their way in the group or starting to deviate, help other people in this. And this is not just a conservative role. As EN types, it's about helping people grow. It's about helping groups transcend. It's not about holding groups together in the sense it's more about making sure that groups proceed in a good positive pattern uh, and that while people are walking on this path the ENFJ can provide insight and guidance for people who are moving on these new patterns I think also ENFJs are about supplying people with patterns, supplying people with things, with new opportunities, giving people other things to hold on to when other people are starting to feel lost. It's about giving people, here, take this, take, there's this opportunity, take this opportunity. Yeah, I don't think you don't even have to hesitate to ask an ENFJ about an opportunity because they will always have something to share with you if things are going badly. So why, where does this drive come from? What is it emotionally that makes an ENFJ want to be like this? I think you have to find that question by asking yourself what meaning is to an ENFJ. And to an ENFJ, meaning is true connection. True connection, nothing filtered out, the full access to another person. That is what an ENFJ finds inherently meaningful. And sure, sometimes ENFJs can lose their way. Sometimes they fall into thinking, perceiving tendencies to brag. Sometimes they uh, become uh, dependent on appearing stronger or better than they are just to get other people to like them. But that's only when they start getting a little lost. When ENFJs feel healthy, they pursue true meaningful connection. It's not about how other people 
see them, it's not about impressing other people, it's about having that ability to truly share with someone else and to feel that other people listen and to be able to be to be able to listen to another person and to have full access to what they are dealing with and going through so that you can help if help is necessary or if they don't even even if they don't want help to just be there i think besides this enfjs want to feel that they are doing something positive for another person I think it's hard for an ENFJ to feel like they are helpless or that there's nothing they can do for another person. I think that's probably one of the worst places to put an ENFJ in. To uh, tell another ENFJ about your problem and to tell them uh, not to do anything about it. And I think that um, it's not uncommon for ENFJs to just ignore what you said and to try to help you anyways. Now. I find that this is often the root of conflicts with feeling perceivers and introverted feeling types and that's just that boundary between giving help and receiving help and I find that something so silly about NFs is that all NFs want to help other people. This is not just true to the ENFJ. The ENFJ of course has a certain process of helping other people. Uh, INFJs tend to help by being that person other people can talk to, but not necessarily by doing anything. ENFJs help in a more hands-on way. Anyways, regardless, what I'm, my point is, is that NFs want to help other people, but they don't want to accept help from other people. And that's just the problem of, that explains why I think NFs feel so alienated. We have this, this uh, value of true compassion, and true compassion means rejecting love from other people. And I think we really have to think to ourselves, and I'm asking you, why do you think other, uh, you don't want help? Do you think it's healthy to live in a world where everyone wants to help, but nobody wants to accept help? It's just my, just my five cents here. I'm not sure what the balance is, but I think we should be thinking about it. Now, true meaningful connection. Why do ENFJs want that? In part, I think this is something ENFPs, ESFPs, ESFJs, and ENFJs all want. I think that's uh, being an EF, I think that's finding value in connection, in closeness, in intimacy, in connection, in oneness. And I noticed that ENFPs as well as ENFJs, has, they have this fantastic ability to feel other people as if they were living the other person's life. It's like when I talk to my ENFP friends as well as my ENFJ friends, that they are just as involved with other people's lives as they are with their own. It's like they don't have that same boundaries, they have that same strong sense of self as INFJs and INFPs have. To them, everyone has a part of them. Everyone around them in this world has qualities that are theirs. Uh, they see themselves in other people and everyone else's experiences are also theirs. And uh, this also means that uh, when you feel can disconnected from other people, for an ENFJ or for an ENFP, that's the worst experience. That's the worst possible experience for an ENFJ or an ENFP. To feel completely disconnected from another person, for, from other people in general. To have no access to other people's emotions, to not know what other people are feeling, to not know what other people are going through, to not hear other people share what they are dealing with. You always want this thing to grab onto that gives you this anchor, this sense of where you are and what you're dealing with. And if you don't have that, that's truly what alienation is for an EF type. So. To sum up, emotionally, the ENFJ has two primary social emotions important in when they relate with other people. And that is 
they care about other people and they care enough, they are passionate enough to want to do something to make the world a better place, to want to help other people, to involve themselves in other people's lives, to involve themselves in groups and in social dynamics and in social issues across the world. And besides that, they value, they are driven by connection and that sense of feeling uh, truly one with the world, with the animals, with the people around you. And um, the unhealthy examples we see of ENFJs can mostly be found in uh, ENFJs that have gone off this course. ENFJs that have been taken over by the desire to impress others, or ENFJs that don't have that connection, that feel alienated. ENFJs that feel um, like they can't care for other people or like nobody wants their help or nobody wants them to do anything. That's like the worst experience for an ENFJ and that's what uh, ENFJs struggle with. That's what makes ENFJs seem negative because when they are in that they become more neurotic, more worried about what other people think, more likely to imagine other people thinking things they don't think, uh, more likely to um, want to impress other people, more likely to pretend to be something they're not, to impress other people. Like, it's uh, and we all go bad when we feel starved. And uh, we all need to find a way to feed the good sides in ourselves. And with that, message. I hope to sign off of this video and I hope to see you guys in the next video. So that's all for now and thank you all for watching.